Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. Today we're checking out a 2003 Ocean Yacht 62 Super Sport. At the time of shooting this video, this one was up for sale in Daytona Beach, Florida for $679,000. And this one is just as impressive as a family cruiser as she is for offshore fishing. As I make my way up to the bow, I like the fact that they've got the handhold right above the windows. You almost don't see them whenever you're walking up to the yacht. But it's always good to have something like that to hold on to, especially when the boat's underway. And then as you get closer to the bow, you've got the outside guardrails instead. And at the bow, you'll see this one does have an electric windlass. And I like the fact this one's actually got a winch built into the top of it as well. Always handy to have, especially if you ever plan on going through lock gates. And I love the design of this one. She's 20 years old, but she looks just as good today as the day she left the yard. This is also the first time I filmed the boat for my YouTube channel where I was technically under a tornado watch. The deck's also got a non-slip deck material to it and it works really well. I was barefoot the entire time I was on the yacht and not once did I feel like my feet were going to slide. As I make my way aft back to the cockpit you can see better those handholds I was mentioning earlier and then obviously you can also see that we have got the outriggers up here too. And the aft cockpit is probably the more focal point for this yacht. And this one certainly doesn't disappoint. I like the appearance of the woodwork and I also like the fact that it does have a transom door for bringing in larger catch like tuna. There's plenty of rod holders throughout the cockpit. We've also got the fighting chair in the middle. We also have wash down systems on both port and starboard. And I'll show you in more detail when we go up to the flybridge but I like the fact that there's a helm that faces over the cockpit so that way the skipper can always keep you on the fish. I like how accessible the transom live well is, that way you've got a quick change out for your bait. And it's all centrally located so that way if you're fishing in the port or starboard side you've got just as easy access to it. And this one does have a bathing platform and it's got boarding ladders too. So between having a bathing platform, the boarding ladders and also that transom door, this one could actually be ideal for a dive boat as well as for offshore fishing. You see we've got more rod holders to port and starboard. And then behind the main accommodation area, this is where you're going to find this is a great seating area to begin with, but also this is your bait station. We've got a small sink here, and that faucet that you see, that pulls out like a shower head. The next section has got a lot of storage compartments in here for all your bait and associated fishing gear. And then the third section you see here, that's actually the hatchway that leads down to the engine room. If I pause the video for a second, while I was on board, they were actually doing general maintenance, oil changes, filter changes, things like that, so I wasn't able to access the engine room. But I can tell you she's powered by twin Detroit diesel. These are MTU 12V engines, approximately 1500 horsepower each. They've got just over 1500 hours each. In the right conditions, you can expect speeds in excess of 30 knots. But at cruising at around 20 knots, you should expect a range of around 500 miles. And on the deck of this one, you're going to find both a port and starboard insulated fish box. This is obviously great for when you're fishing, but it also doubles up as storage, as you can see here. And I like the fact that these hatch covers, they all have a locking mechanism to it. This boat is designed for serious offshore use, and that way you don't need to worry about these hatches popping up whenever the boat's underway. There is also an Eskimo ice machine on board, and this was rebuilt over the past year. And this transom fish hold, it's also got a removable compartment to make it easier for you as well. Now as much as these yachts were designed for offshore fishing, I mentioned at the start of this video it would be ideal for family cruising as well. And when you step on board, this one definitely has a luxury yacht feel to it. I love the amount of headroom that's in here throughout the entire yacht. I love the amount of natural light that's available in the saloon area. I like how much space there is for walking around. You don't feel claustrophobic as if you're going to bump into something or someone. And all the carpets, wall coverings and panels, those have all been replaced or upgraded over the past year as well. And from a practicality perspective, I like the fact that the control panel's right at the door for your AC and DC controls. This one does have two 15 kilowatt Westerbeek generators on board. Those have got somewhere around the 1300-1400 hour mark. Making our way forward, you see we do have a large TV on the starboard side. All the TVs and the audio-visual equipment, those have all been upgraded recently as well. Next to that is a storage compartment that has got a drinks fridge in here. Making refreshments easily accessible for your family and friends on board. 
And notice all the doors on board have got that little locking mechanism, so again, nothing's going to open while the boat's underway. A couple of steps up takes you to our dining area. And to port is where you're going to find a extremely well-equipped galley. You can prepare all your favourite meals on board, including the fresh catch that you bring. So in here we've got plenty of storage, you get your granite countertops. We've got a new Whirlpool side-by-side -side refrigerator. There's a Kenmore trash compactor. And I like the use of storage where they even have overhead compartment. This is a yacht you can easily spend extended time on board without feeling like you have to rush back into the dock for. So this Whirlpool side-by-side -side refrigerator, it's also got chest freezer below. It's also got the water and ice on the door. And I like the fact that throughout the yacht, there's a number of safety equipment, fire extinguishers, things like that, but they're all easily accessible. I hope no one ever needs to use them, but in the event of an emergency, I like the fact that they're easily there. And then as I pan the camera around, you'll see we've also got a Kenmore oven. You've got a deep stainless steel sink, and that faucet's got like a shower head that pulls out. And then underneath this wooden panel, you'll see we've got a Force 10 3 burner electric stove. The galley's also got a Visani microwave oven. And then if I open one of these storage compartments, you'll see all the glasses for the drinks. Those are securely in place. There's like a little lip overhang. So again, nothing slides whenever the boat's underway. And as we make our way down to the lower accommodation, if you notice in the stairway, for want of a better word, they've even got storage built in here as well. Anywhere you can fit a drawer or a cabinet throughout the entire yacht, they have utilized the space to its full potential. I apologise for the watermark on this section, this was the first section I filmed when I got on board. But down here you're going to find three staterooms. First up is to port, and you're going to find a twin guest cabin in here. I like not only the number of storage options in here, but I like the woodwork finish too, it's got a nice shine. It's also not dark woodwork, so it doesn't feel like claustrophobic when you're in a smaller cabin. This one does have a TV mounted on the bulkhead. And it's also got a little vanity station, which would double up as a nice desk area too. Easily fit a laptop here. And there's even hanging locker space. It's all cedar lined behind the main door to this cabin as well. The owners are currently using this section for storage for a number of health and safety apparatus. And my understanding is things like all the life jackets are included in the sale of the yacht too. And this yacht has got air conditioning throughout. And in a day like today, I can tell you that the yacht was super cool on board. Not only is that beneficial for all your guests, but it also works wonders for the yacht itself too. Helps avoid all that dampness and mildew and problems you can have from it too. And then on the bow is where you're going to find the VIP stateroom. This has got a queen size island berth. There's storage to either side of the bed. There's storage overhead and there's even storage under the bed itself. And as I pan the camera around, you'll see this is a very large guest stateroom. And again, there's a TV mounted on the bulkhead. There's a small vanity station in the middle. And it's kind of like his and her hanging locker space either side. And then this stateroom's en suite. And this is probably a good time to point out that in total, this yacht offers 255 gallons of fresh water. There's 1,450 gallons of fuel and there's a 100 gallon holding tank capacity. And I like the fact that this one's got a separate toilet and shower compartment. It just makes both sections far more usable. There's also plenty of natural light from the hatch overhead and storage here for your toiletries and personal belongings. And then as I go to make my way out of the cabin and show you more of the accommodation area down here, Notice how the stairs that lead up to the main saloon and galley. Um, that's got the illumination on there, the courtesy of lights. I'm sure that's beneficial at night. And at the bottom of the stairs, this is where you're going to find the guest head compartment. And there's a toilet behind the door. There's a separate shower compartment. And again, there's space for toiletries and personal belongings. And then as we continue to head aft, this will be on the starboard side. I like the fact that there's laundry facilities on board. You've got both a washer and a dryer, that way not only are you keeping your clothes fresh, but all your towels and linens and things like that too. There's also good countertop space up here if you wanted to fold clothes, towels, things like that. So this yacht's one of the biggest yachts I've featured on my channel. She measures in at 62 foot in length, she's got a draft of 5 feet, but she's got a beam of over 17 feet. And you just get that sense of having so much space on board, so much volume. 
that you can offer so much more when it comes to the accommodation. And one area you'll feel the benefit of that beam is when it comes to the owner's stateroom. This has to be one of the largest staterooms I've featured on my channel. It's got a large island berth, easily accessible from either side. There's a new TV mounted on the bulkhead. And this one has got direct TV with satellite throughout the yacht. There's also a Wi-Fi amplifier. And again, that vanity station would double up as a nice desk. There is so much storage in here. You could easily make this a permanent liveaboard. Certainly spend extended time on board. There's even drawers mounted underneath the bed. And then as I pan the camera around, you see what you do have hanging locker space on the starboard side. And then this stateroom is, of course, fully en suite. And this hanging locker space has actually got a clever design where if you look behind the clothes, you'll see there's actually shelves like a shoe rack in here too. And then for the heads compartment in here, I really like how spacious it is. There's a separate toilet and shower compartment, and again, it just makes both sections far more usability. But even just the finishing touches, the chrome, the gold, the woodwork, things like that, it all just makes the head compartment feel not as claustrophobic as some of the other ones I've been on before. When it's all dark materials, it just doesn't have the same finish to it. And it's a small personalised touch, but I also like the fact that there's a number of tills, there's a number of different things throughout the yacht that's all got the yacht's image and name branded on it too. That always gives me a sense that the owner's proud of the boat that they have. And if we pop back up to the saloon, there's a spiral staircase that leads up to the flybridge. And I like how solid the staircase is, solid handhold. This would be very easy for any of your family and friends to climb up. Once you make your way up here, why wouldn't you want to be up here? This is fully enclosed, fully air-conditioned. you got full panoramic views. I like the fact that there's a seat near the up here for your close family and friends to be with you. There's two seats at the helm, which in my opinion is husband and wife, but this one is actually professionally maintained by a captain. We've also got a little drinks bar up here, including a TV that's mounted and a fridge in between. And this one is fully equipped with a wide range of electronics. So to begin with we've got the Garmin multifunction display and you can see one of those air conditioning vents. You've got a Raymarine GPS chart plotter and this one's coupled up to the radar and next to it you've got the Radeon speed log depth. We've got another AC vent and then a colour Garmin multifunction display and that's a Danforth compass above it. And then we've got the Raytheon Autopilot. We've got a second Raymarine multifunction display. We've got a VHF radio that's got AIS built into it. You then have full engine instrumentation, and this one is also equipped with a bow thruster. You've got controls for accessories like your search light, your windlass, toggle switches for your trim tab, etc. And I like the design of both the wheel and the throttles. This is a boat that's designed for speed offshore. So it's always handy to have something that's big and sustainable to hold on to and control. And the helm seats have a clever design where you can easily stand against them like a leaning post. But you can also sit up on them with very much comfortable seating. And those armrests can be lifted up if you wanted to as well. And from the flybridge, I like the fact that we also do have an additional steering position on the aft deck. Having the full controls out here, including the bow thruster control, that helps when it comes to the close quarter manoeuvring like docking, but it's also going to be real advantageous whenever you're landing on the catch. That way the captain can keep backing the boat up and help bring that big game on board. And you see up here we do have the rocket launcher style rod holders. We've also got two manual teaser reels. And then you can get a close-up of those double spreader anodized aluminum outriggers. I'd like to thank the captain for his time for allowing me to come on board. I'd like to thank Joe for the opportunity to share this video with you all. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments if you can leave a comment down below. And if you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. And as always, I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.